Harry here, this is Lord Potato, and this is what if Asta was the reincarnation of Suguru Ghetto? You filthy monkeys. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just going around in the beginning, but not the point. <clears throat> so, yes, Asta is going to be the reincarnation of Ghetto, and also the reason why I'm kind of uh, making this is because I just found out that I'm about to hit a thousand videos that I just made on this channel. Which is crazy because right now it's at 90, 90, well, no, not 90, 999, and it's about to hit 1k after I upload this video. So that's why I'm gonna do it a special. So, yeah, it's not a movie. Sorry if uh, I won't be having enough time to make a movie. Sorry. Not sorry at the same time. But of course, let me just begin. It says, What if let me just shut the fuck up and let me begin? Other than that, we begin into mostly this what if. So we begin into mostly, well, Issei. Well, not, not Issei, Asta, for fuck's sake. Asta is right now born in, well, born with his mother, but of course his mother had to kind of leave him at a church. Of course, with another show. Now, Asta in this one is going to have kind of grayish hair. That won't change that much, but it does have kind of some black streaks around his hair, but not much either. This is where, oh. Asta has been a kind of curious child somewhere. Always been a very curious child. But at the same time, he always have been very calm and always kind of wondering if he should have a purpose. But yeah, we go from that kind of time scope of him kind of being as a child. Well, mostly from baby to child, but yeah. But yeah, that's what Asta has been. Mostly, he's only seven years old, or mostly not, yeah, seven years old, and he's only been wondering in what to do. He did kind of notice that you know how to kind of, you know, it's the other child, but mostly you know how to go and, like, give, like, this car, uh, like, letter towards a person about any money or something like that. I he forgot what exactly it was, but this went well. While that was happening, this went well. Uh, he went to kind of, well... He is kind of blessed with mana, but not much. He is quite strong for his age. He's also quite smart for his age also. This is where, well, Asta has actually been looking around. Mostly, he has been helping mostly Sister Lily and actually kind of like mostly take care of some of the other young children. He's okay with taking care of some of the other children, but not the point. He then realized that Yuno hasn't came back and decided to go look for him. This is where he tells Mosi, uh, Father Orsi, that he's going to go look for Yuno. Which Father Orsi says, uh, it'd be dangerous, maybe I should. This is where, well, Asta stops Mosi, Father Orsi, and says, you're too old. I'm gonna go look for him. I'm young. I can go find him. This is where Father Orsi says, uh, he either felt like he got insulted or he just felt that Asta's a quite a young, mostly young and mostly nice kid, but yeah. But at the same time, it felt like an assault. But this is where, well, Asa runs off to go look for Mosi Yuno. This is where Yuno was crying, saying, give me back my necklace. This is where, well, when Asa saw this, something actually clicked inside him, and it pissed him off so much. This is where, well, he saw someone right now beating up his supposed brother. This is where, well, Yuno is crying. This is where the person says, if you use that magic, I'll kill you using this fire magic. This is where, well, Yuno starts crying, closing his eyes. And this is where Asa says, hey, you. This is where, well, the person looks up to see, well, he's, uh, not, he's, Asa, and Asa kind of just looks at Mosi, well, the person. The person says, who, what, what is another brat doing here? Give my necklace back to my little brother, you filthy monkey. This is where, well, the person says, F did you just call me a monkey? I'll show you who you're calling a monkey. Die! This is where, well, before the older man can even attack, well, Asa, Asa right now did not even notice that he did this, but he summoned out something from, uh, well, behind him, a dragon-looking figure. This is where a dragon chomped on mostly the drunken person, but the necklace was dropped down, and this is where he kind of grabs the necklace. <clears throat> he then goes up to, uh, mostly, you know, and puts her on top of him, <clears throat> mostly around him. This is where, well, Asa says, stop crying, you big baby. Just, just remember this, you know. I will always protect you, no matter what. You know, looks at mostly Asta. He sees the dragon, but the dragon isn't spilling any blood from the person. And that's where Asta just smiles at him brightly. While you know, kind of sees this, he kind of cheers up and says, "Yeah, uh, what happened to the guy?" That's where Asta says, "Don't know." 
the dragon itself that was behind mostly Asta disappeared, but yeah. But this is where, well, Asta didn't understand how he'd been summoned that, but he didn't care too much. He just decided to kind of grab Vino from the arm and just kind of drag him back towards the church. This is where, well, mostly Asta says, let's go there, big brother. I mean, not big brother, brother. <laughs> Sorry, I almost mistake you for something. This is where, well, mostly, you know, nodded. He smiles, and this is where he then says, yeah, let's go. This is where, well, we go into someone's POV. He's right now kind of smiling, seeing Asta kind of cheerful, walking away with another kid. Hmm, quite interesting to see you right now smile like that. I wish I could actually stay a little bit longer to see this kind of sight of yours, little brother. This is where he disappears in an instant, while anyone even noticing he was even there. This is where well, we go into mostly Asta kind of just running up to the church and of course where well they kind of had this like breakfast and food and this work well mostly we go into a time skip about later mostly about when they're nine years old also has actually been trained in his magic his magic is weird it's like not entirely magic well it is magic but it's not entirely magic this blue energy usually appears around his hand when he's using magic and this is where, well, he actually kind of uses it on a tree and it does, it does explode and this is where he's confused. He's like, hmm, how does this work? What is my magic entirely? I know Yuna's magic is mostly, how should I say, this wind magic, which is strong. But how will my magic work? I was just thinking, hmm, this is interesting. Hmm, how did I summon out that dragon? When I was fighting against a guy, all I remember was being really angry. And so angry to the point that I call him a monkey. Why did I call him a monkey? Hmm. Maybe I should not think of this too much. Hmm. This is where he felt this ominous energy behind him. And this is where, well, he turns around to see this, like, humanoid figure right now walking past him. But this is where, well, he felt the humanoid figure seems to be not entirely in control. He felt like there was something on top of this figure. This is where the figure is like clutching onto this person's uh, back. And this is where, well, mostly us just seems confused. But decides to kind of go up to the man and say, hey, you okay? This is where the figure turns around and looks at mostly us and says, me? I'm fine. Why do I feel, huh? I feel fine. Yeah. No, I'm okay, kid. See you. This is where, well, Austin right now has a ball in his hand. It's this kind of blackish reddish ball. This is where, well, mostly Asta just sees this, like, reddish, blackish ball. Well, it's kind of a different color from red, but not the point. It's kind of like a darkish kind of blue color. He looks at it and kind of just, like, keeps looking at it. What the hell do I do? This is where something in his head just tells us to eat it. This is where, well, mostly Asta, he got told in his head to just, like, pull, put his hand right in front of him. And this, like, bluish color of his hand started appearing. And he absorbed the thing that was on top of the guy's back. And put it into a ball. He didn't understand entirely what it was, mm -hmm. but decides to mostly eat the kind of ball. He tastes it, and it tastes so bad. <laughs> that tastes bad. What the fuck did I just eat? This is where he was I'm about to gag again, but yeah. <coughs> Ow, sorry. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> damn, it, damn it. But of course, damn. It. But of course, this worked well. Asta just was confused about it, and this worked well. He then kind of heard something telling him to summon it out. This worked well. Asta says, "Well, I don't know how to summon it out. I don't have a grimoire and understanding my magic. And who the hell are you in my head? What are you anyway? Or who keeps telling me things in my head? Ah, this is so confusing. Whatever." He goes up and decides to try to summon it out, or whatever it was. This is where, well, when he tries to summon out something from his hand, ice right now shoots out from his hand and right now smashing upon the tree. Huh? What the? What the? The hell was that? This is where Asa looks at his hand and says, What the? Hell was that? Huh? This is where, well, he was just looking at his hand and he's trying to look for any, like, frostbite ice or whatever the hell that was. This is where he's like looking at it and analyzing it and saying, this, this is odd. That's not what I did. That's, I'm so confused. Do I have ice magic? 
but that's not what I did to that person. That person had a very icy kind of aura around him, like a dark icy aura. But did I absorb it? But how? Mostly, us is a little bit more confused now on how his ability works. He has trained upon it when he was younger, but mostly, he entirely still didn't figure out what it does exactly. He did remember something out that dragon, but of course, at the same time, he can't really remember what it was. This is where, oh. Asa then thought about asking that guy. He needs to ask that guy about where exactly he went to kind of get a dark feeling or where he was at before. So that's what Asa did. He decided to ignore the fact that he froze the tree and decided to run off. The tree itself started kind of just decaying after a while and this went, well, the tree fully just shatters after a while. Someone was watching mostly Asa run off along to see the older man. Hmm. Seems like little brother is actually trying to figure out what exactly he needs to do. Hmm. Whatever. I could help him. Yeah, I could help him using his magic. But no. He needs to figure out for it right now. Maybe I'll teach him when he's older. This is where well, Asa goes and looks for that person. But yeah, we go into Asa. Asa says, hmm, where did that guy go? He then finds him. Right now, he's flirting with some kind of girl or whatever. And Asa just waits for this guy to stop flirting. Now, of course, the guy just realized he got dumped by the girl. Like, the girl didn't want him at all. Like, nah. This is where, well, Asa just switch off. And decides to follow this person. This is where, well, Asa keeps following this person. And dump, da, 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 da. He's hiding behind some things. And this is where Asa's looking over where exactly he went to. He went to a bar. This is where Asa says, uh... Can I even go into this? I know Father Orsi says they never to go into bars. They always are evil. But I have seen Father Orsi do the exact same thing and there's never demonic creatures in there. This is where Asa was about to step into it until someone says, hey, you. This is where Asa jumps up and says, huh? This is where, well, he noticed what to call this older looking man and says, what are you doing? This is where, well, Asa says, uh, uh, nothing. I was, I was, uh, Walking home, this is where well, Asa said, smiling at the person. The person says, You better do that, brat. Yeah, this is where well, Asa just walks away and switch up and says, Okay, that won't work. Hmm, how would I be able to get in there and talk to that man? This is where well, Asa then has an idea, and this is where well, he then kind of went to go uh, get well, someone to help him with this kind of crazy idea that probably won't work. This is where, well, he's running around until this is where, well, he kind of, well, looks around, keeps looking around, finding really no one to actually help him. Like, the other kids, they are, well, mostly they're all with their family and other things, but this is where, well, mostly he was, like, sitting under a tree saying, how would I work this out? Hmm. He's right now thinking, saying, this is so annoying. Who do I get to actually help me? I would ask you know, but you know it's just right now trying to his wind magic. Ah, oh, this is so difficult. This is where he's laying under the tree, and this is where, well, someone says, Yo, you need help? This is where, well, also says, Yeah, I need help in getting inside somewhere. Hmm. This is where, well, the person's right now upside the tree, uh, well, upside down the tree, like, hang hanging onto the tree, and looks like he's the same age as, uh, well, mostly Asta. Also looks up and says, What the hell are you doing? This guy has kind of whitish hair, kind of having these kind of glasses. And this is where, well, dark tree glass, and this is where, well, the person seems to be kind of, it looks to be noble, but not much. He does look quite good looking for mostly a commoner, which also has also been considered to be way too good looking for a commoner. But this is where, well, also then looks up to the kind of kid and says, who the hell are you? Huh? Oh, my name is, well, my name is, uh, how should I say, <clears throat> Satoru. What's your name? Asta. Oh. Well, that's interesting. I think I have seen you before. You're that guy who usually hangs out with the other black-haired kid uh, with goldenish eyes. What was the thing? You know? Yeah. So, what's up, Asta? This is where, well, we'll see. Asta says, I really need to get into a bar. And I know I probably won't be able to get in there, but I need to figure out mostly a talk from someone. I need information from that person, but I can't get into that bar. And my crazy idea was to kind of Go get a mostly giant coat, put it mostly both of us around, and kind of look tall enough to be able to get into that bar. This is where, well, mostly Satoru goes, hmm, 
Interesting. Sure, why not? Sounds fun. This is where uh, mostly uh, Asa says, Really? You actually help? This is where Asa gets up in an empty. Satoru says, Of course, why not? I'm bored anyway. I would train my magic, but I'm so bored and confused of my magic. This is where, well, he smiles at Mosi Asta. Asta kind of grins and says, good. This is where Asta does have greenish eyes, while Mosi Satoru has bluish eyes, but yeah. But not the point. That would be kind of important later, but not much. But this is where, well, we go into Mosi Boat. Asta and Satoru doing the plan. It's a crazy ass plan, but this is where they manage to walk in. <laughs> this is where, well, Right now, Asta had to put over the fucking, like, hat over him so Mosi doesn't look too recognized and says, um, may I walk in? This is where the person says, no shit, just walk inside, the person says. There's mostly someone that's stopping any kid from going inside, but yeah. They both go inside managing to, but of course they're walking. This is where Asta says, Satoru, walk forward. Satoru says, yeah, I know that. I just can barely see where I'm going. Well, I can see, but not the point. This is where Asta says, yeah, I know, just keep going. We're almost to the drunken guy. Forward. This is where they smash into a wall. This is where Asa says, Ow! Satoru! This is where Satoru says, Hey! Fuck off! Leave me alone! I can This is kind of annoying. Why Why couldn't you switch spots with me? This is where, well, mostly Asa says, I asked if you wanted to be on top. Man, fuck this shit. Can't we just, like, get off of each other and just be able to walk towards him? No, there's too many fucking older guys here. But just keep going. Four, 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 stop, 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 stop. Okay, we're good. This is where, well, we'll see. Asta decides to kind of sit on the chair somewhat. We'll see Satoru was, well, not sitting on the chair, we'll see just stand there. This is where Satoru says, ah, you're so fucking heavy. This is where, well, we'll see Asta says, you're the one who's complaining. Yeah, shut up for a second. This is where, well, we'll see. They're both kind of just angry at each other, but not much. They're only playing fighting, but yeah. This is where, well, mostly Asa says, hey, you. This is where, well, he kind of asks the person in his somewhat deep voice. This is where the person looks over and says, what do you want, man? This is where, well, so where have you, where do you work at? And this is where the person says, I work somewhere in the mountains. It's been a long day. Ugh. What happened? Uh, it's just like, I found some kind of like ruined kind of seal and I, as they opened and it was some kind of devil and it was hurting my back. It wanted me to kill lots of people. Of course, after a while, I bumped into some kid and the kid asked if I was okay and realized the thing that was on my back disappeared. No one believes me and I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. I see, demon, what do you mean? It was this like winged, like ice winged bastard monster i can't tell it had claws it had horns it kind of reminded me of those stories that my grandfather used to tell me about demons they're like demons are supposedly like these weaker kind of smaller but mostly they're always around the world they can be mostly like these spirits that are usually around the world they're not devils they're mostly some some of these demons are usually uh born in what's it called the world they're not that, There's there is a lot, but not that much where that we have to deal with. Some of the magic knights deal with them. But these demons, they all come in different types of shapes and other things. My grandfather told me a lot about them. And if you saw a seal, like, on somewhere else, that just means that mostly a magic knight either sealed him away there or maybe he got sealed right there. And the thing that I got, we'll see, frozen or uh, kind of got managed to... Uh, well, managed to be on my body was like this mid-tier demon. Okay, I see. Um, is there some way to defeat them? Yeah, either seals or magic counter attack towards it. But other than that, I don't know much. This is where, well, what was his name? I don't know, I couldn't tell, he wouldn't tell me. <laughs> There's also the fact that if you manage to find the name of the demon, the name of the demon, it either gets stronger or weaker over time. If you keep kind of, well, saying it and kind of praying to, well, God, that will be able to be smite away. This way, well, mostly, I was say, I see. Or not to God, mostly to the first Clover King. This way, well, that's where well, I say, I see. Hmm, interesting. Uh, well, hmm. 
is there anything else that I should know about these demons? Just to make sure, I, I want to keep my family safe. Asa said. This is right, well, most of the person says, no, not much other things about them that are known. We only know that they come from the hell, mostly supposedly underworld, for the devils, where mostly the devils are sealed away. I you know about the seal men of the devils because my grandfather used to be from Spade Kingdom until he came over here. <laughs> he was a good man. He didn't really abuse me or my family at all. Other than that, he died a long time ago. But it was from a curse of a demon that actually kind of cursed him. When he was, he used to be a person that dealt with these demons. But other than that, I can't tell you much. Other than that, I feel a little bit tired. Good night. He falls asleep in this way. Well, also seems a little bit confused. Demons? Devils? Hmm. Curses? Hmm. Interesting. This is where, well, mostly we go into both uh, Satoru and Asa switching spots. Mostly go into a bathroom and switching spots. This is where Satoru says, forward, 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 forward. This is where, well, they managed to get out of the door and this is where, well, Satoru says, oh, thank goodness. We didn't get caught or any of that. This is where, well, Asa says, yeah, 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 let's just get out of here. This is where, well, they get to an alleyway and they just take off their kind of like the giant black cloak, the hat, and just drop it all off. <sighs> that was so much easier. That was, that was easier. So what the hell did you get from the guy? All I heard was ranting and I couldn't hear much. And Satoru asked Asta. Asta says the guy was ranting on about demons, devils, and curses. All that I understand is that demons can roam around the world. Well, not many of them, but there are still a few that can actually roam around the world. And uh, magic knights usually are rare or there's some other things that are called hunters. Or not hunters. Well, yeah, there's something that are called hunters to that hunt mostly these demons to actually get rid of them. But other than that, there's also Magic Knights that does the same. But, mm, I'm a little confused with all that. Hmm, interesting. So, what do you want to do? I was just saying, hmm, I don't know. If, if the guy was telling the truth, I just absorb a mid rank devil, or not devil, demon. What do you mean? So I remember using ice on a tree. I met the guy and I kind of turned into a ball and absorb it by eating it. It takes very bad. But this is where, well, I managed to then use, I think it's affinity to ice. Can I see it? This is where I have to say, I don't really know how to use it or control or any of it. This is where, well, Sutter so says, how about like just train? This is where, well, I also say, sure, why not? <coughs> Wait. So mostly while, well, both uh, Satoru and Asa goes off to kind of train in the force. This is where, well, they both decide to fight each other. Now, of course, this is where, well, they realize they don't actually know much of their magic. So, of course, they're basically just having a tug of war right now, just fighting each other. And, of course, their skill in fighting is not the greatest, but yeah. This is where they both manage to punch each other, and this is where, well, just push each other away. Ah! Uh, this is where, well, they kind of like fall over and say, ow! This is where they're bleeding from their nose, and this is where, well, Satoru said, I thought you were going to use your magic. This is where, well, Asa said, I thought you were going to use your magic. This is where both of them just start chuckling and just laughing. This is where, oh, they're just kind of laughing from the fact that they're arguing like children, which they are, but this is where, well, they kind of just like sat down, realizing that they don't understand that much about magic control. This is where they're just like thinking. So, this is where Asa says, So, Satoru, how's your family and other things? Like, do you have a family or any of that? Satoru says quiet. And just sighs and says, I don't really have a family. Entirely. I've been an orphan for a while. <clears throat> I really don't have family or any of that. But since I remember something, some stuff, you can just say that I'm the strongest here. That's where he's a little bit arrogant and says, I don't really need family anyway. Considering that I'm the strongest. I just scoff and says, Strong as my ass. I might actually punch you right in the face. This is where Satoru just says, That was because I let you. I'm just being very generous. This is where Asa just says, Generous my ass. This is where well, Satoru says, Eh, whatever. How about you? You have family? Asa thinks about it. He just thinks about it more. No, not entirely. I live at the church. I live mostly with the other kind of orphans at the church. Where exactly do you live, Satoru? Well, I just ran away recently. Ran away from a different village, not Hodge Village. Hodge Village is interesting, 
but the other village was kind of annoying, so of course I just ran away. So you can consider I'm a runaway orphan. That's what I also says. You want to kind of just live with me and my brother, uh, you know, in the village, uh, what's it called, church? That's where, well, start to get up and say, I really don't like living with other people. <clears throat> it kind of is weird. Oh, shut up. You're an orphan. So does it really, does it really matter? Are you a noble then? This is where, well, Satra chuckles and says, hell no, I'm not a noble. But still, I really don't want to stay out here in the fucking cold. I haven't even used magic. I wish it was fire magic because it would have been fucking nice. But no, I'm like, this is where I almost see. <clears throat> right now, Asa chuckles and says, wow, that means you probably just suck at using your magic entirely if it's not fire magic. I thought it was just a basic ass, like, magic. This is where Satoru says, Oh, shut up, you bastard. It's harder to actually learn what my magic is. Entirely, I've been trying to figure it out. With these eyes that I have, it should be easier to figure it out, but no. They just tell me some information, but I don't understand it fully. Asa says, So you're a dumbass. This is where, well, mostly Satoru says, Hey, you mother. This is where, well, Asa says, Ha, suck it. This is where, well, mostly, well, Satoru and Asa just start kind of struggling and fighting each other, trying to kind of beat the shit of each other, but yeah. But this is where, well, we go into a time skip of them getting to the church, and this is where, well, both Satoru and Asa looks like they are rough the fuck up. This is where, well, mostly Sister Lily rushes up to both of them and says, uh, Asta, what happened to you? And who are you anyway, but what happened to you too? This is where, well, mostly Satoru says, uh... Both of them just kind of looks away and says, he did it first. This is where, well, they point at each other, childish. This is where, well, making Father Orsi says, uh, okay. This is where he wasn't expecting, well, mostly, uh, well, Asa to be childish. He knows that Asa is quite mature for being his age, but he's childish. This is where, well, sometimes. This is where, well, mostly, uh, Satoru says, I'm okay. I'm, I'm the strongest. Those punches didn't even hurt. Weren't you crying a couple of seconds ago, Asta said. Uh, this is where Satoru says, uh, Shut up! This is where, well, he kind of looks angry and mostly, well, Asta and Asta just scuff at Satoru. But yeah. But we go into mostly a time skip of them kind of being actually 11. Satoru, Asta, and even Yuno have been kind of been really good friends. But mostly, well, Satoru and Asta has been kind of like brothers. But yeah, even Yuno. Yuno has been kind of training with wind magic. And trying to get stronger, of course, it worked well. Mostly when both Asta and Satoru realized what their magic entirely was. Mostly, Satoru realized his magic is kind of that of using infinity or limitless or whatever it's called. This is where, well, it's just basically kind of like space reality. Well, not space. It's like kind of space magic, but not much. It's not time magic, but it's interesting. It's like him warping kind of space entirely for his help. But yeah, but still, there's some things that he realized one thing. He has this power limitless that allows him to make kind of a barrier around him, but it's not automatic. And of course, mostly some things can get through it. He looks at us and us just kind of throws a rock towards him. And this is where the rock didn't hit mostly Satoru, but a fucking tomato that this is where well, mostly Satoru glares at us and us just with it. <laughs> didn't do anything. This is where Satoru scoffs at us, but this is where, well, Asa's magic has actually been improved now. He's actually been kind of going out as kind of a demon hunter, but yeah. Now, mostly he is considered to be somewhat of a demon hunter because he's been wearing black clothing and other things and been going to different villages with Satoru to kind of hunt down these like supposed demons. Now, he has a multiple variety of different types of magic. It's like soul magic, but instead of like being able to kind of like take the soul of someone and then be able to use their magic now, it's different. Think of it like, uh, yeah, but not the point. It's pretty much just like, uh, we'll see, de uh, demon manipulation. But yeah, demon manipulation magic, but yeah. It allows him to kind of absorb the demons or kind of, it's like, it's like a Suguru, like what's it called, Suguru Ghetto's kind of, uh, well, curse technique. Being that of like curse spirit manipulation, but it's called demon manipulation. It allows him to kind of grab the demons that he kind of defeated in battle or just made them submit to him and he can now absorb them and make them a part of his arsenal. But yeah, 
And yes, and since he is the reincarnation of Suguru, this is kind of, instead of using Terra's energy, it's mana, but yeah. But, that's the thing. Now, he also kind of does have someone like Suguru Getsu's kind of like different other spirits that he had in his past life. But, instead of being called, uh, mostly cursed spirits, they're actually demons now. So, the dragon is considered to be demon. And a quite high-ranking demon. But, yeah. But, not the point. This where, oh. <laughs> mostly, also kind of has a quite powerful magic. He just hides it a little bit. And doesn't use that many var uh variety kind of different magic spells to attack mostly Satoru when they're actually trained, but yeah. But this is where well we go into mostly a somewhat time skip. From mostly them kind of like having a spar battle almost every freaking time, just to see if both of them can actually surpass their limits, which they do. They're actually kind of increasing their magical power much more powerful and faster than mostly you know. Which Yuno realized that he needs to improve much faster because he's kind of getting left behind by both Suguru, or not Suguru, by both Asta and uh, Satoru, but yeah. This is where, well, they are both kind of always angry at each other, but yeah, both Satoru and Asta, but yeah. So while that was happen uh, happening, we go into mostly a uh, time skip, or not even a time skip, a couple of days later. Mostly while that was happening, this where, well, Asta was asleep uh, under a tree. And so, well, he was asleep under a tree, while Satoru was asleep on top of a tree. Yuno was still training, this way, well, he still needed to catch up mostly to, uh, well, Asta and even Satoru. But this way, well, both of them were asleep. This way, someone actually kind of noticed Asta was asleep under the tree. Of course, they, did, they really did not see Satoru, who Satoru kind of did go off to go use the bathroom, but not the point. This is where, well, they go up to mostly, uh, Asta, and right now kind of, like, poke him to see if he's actually uh, awake or alive. That's where Asta says, stop that fucking Satro. Leave me alone, I'm trying to sleep. That's where he yawns, and this is where, well, someone then realized that Asta's really not dead. This is where, well, the person waves its hand on Asta's face, just to see if Asta would wake up. Asta grabs their wrist because, well, mostly they realize that mostly uh, just waving upon Asta's face won't wake him up. So, of course, they're about to grab Asta's kind of like hair just to see if that wake them up until their hand was grabbed in an instant. This is where Asta wakes up and opens his eyes. Kind of annoyed, thinking it's Satoru and saying, Satoru, how many fucking deaths were? Well, mostly since he is 11, he says, How many ducking times have I told you to stop? Not in me. This is where, well, a girl with kind of blondish hair, like kind of palish blondish hair, with bluish kind of uh, palish eyes kind of appear, looking at, well, mostly Asta. Asta says, can I help you there? This is where, well, she kind of nodded. She kind of looked at mostly Asta and her arm. This is where, well, mostly Asta, let's go for and says, can I help you anyway? She kind of says, yes, why are you sleeping on a tree? Do you even have anywhere to live? She kind of questioned. Asta says, yes, I have places to live. I'm sleeping because my idiotic brother should be around here. Where the hell does Satoru even go? This is where, well, we'll see. She looks curious and says, I don't know. This is where, well, we'll see. Asta says, I'm going to kill that bastard later. Not the point. Who are you and what do you want? This is where, well, she says, mm, nothing. Um, this is where Asa noticed something uh, different about her. Well, familiar and different at the same time. This where, well, she had a very demonic presence. But the problem is, the demonic presence wasn't a demon, perhaps. It was the devil. This where, well, he felt it and right now got got on nerve. And while wanting to stand up and actually see uh, what exactly is her connection with a devil and a demon. Well, we'll see from demons. Now, of course, he doesn't have actually any manipulation over devils. But demons, he does since he is a demon kind of uh, manipulator magic user. He actually does not know about devils at all. But this is where, well, Asta just seems unnerved about her. This is where, oh, well, she seems to probably notice that Asta seems to catch up on her. And this is where she says, calm down. This is where, well, uh, not calm down. She then kind of just says, hey, hey, I'm not really here to fight. She kind of waves her hands uh, in front of her. This is where Asta says, how the hell can I trust that? Also, who exactly are you? I think I have never seen you in this kind of village. 
she kind of says, well, me and my sister have been just traveling uh, different villages just to see whichever can be our village home. Because the one that we were at kind of got destroyed between a magic knight and like some kind of like devil or something. I cannot remember. I was just like, ah, I see. Where's your sister at anyway? Uh, technically, I don't really know. This is where, well, we'll see. I was just like, so what's your name? This is where, well, she says, my name is Junko. What's your name? Asta. You don't have a last name? Not really. Nope. This is where, well, Asta says, okay. Well, my, if my brother comes anytime soon, his name is Satoru. This is where, well, we'll see. She's, so I, says, I, I see. Uh, well, my sister comes, her name is, well. We go into mostly Satoru's POV, and of course, well, Satoru was actually kind of, he's using the restroom. But of course, you can hear something kind of around the forest. He felt like there's someone singing. He doesn't understand too much and why, who exactly is singing. He thinks it's actually Asa coming out that he's actually singing, just not in front of him. This is where Satoru grins, thinking that mostly Asa still thinks he's under the tree. He, so that's why he goes to the direction towards the singing. But this is where, when he comes uh, towards the place that mostly the person singing, it is not mostly Asa because the voice he realizes is too feminine. And when he jumps out, just realizing right now that it's not Asta, but instead a girl with kind of purplish hair with kind of highlights of pink, and her eyes kind of like right now it's shown to have kind of these starry eyes in them. This is where uh, Satoru thought it was basically Asta, so that's why he was going to just tackle him. But realized it wasn't, and instead he just plopped onto a girl. This is where, well, the girl just looks confused at Satoru, and Satoru looks confused at her. This is where, well, she thought it was actually none other than her sister, her somewhat uh, sister that she's actually been traveling with. But this is where, well, it was some other guy. And Satoru thought it was Asta, and they're just right now kind of in this situation. This is where well, both of them accidentally scream because, well, it wasn't each other what they thought about. And instead, this is where, well, mostly both Junko and, well, Asta stops talking because they hear screaming. They rush towards the direction and see mostly uh, Satoru saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is where, well, she says, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. This is where, well, uh, both of them are kind of just flustered with each other. This is where Asta says, what the fuck happened here? This is where, well, mostly Satoru says, nothing. This is where uh, Junko says, are you okay, sis? She says, yeah, I'm fine. This is where, well, they are both flustered and instantly. This is where, well, both Junko and Asta are just confused. They say, what exactly happened? This is where, well, Asta says, are you sure there was nothing uh, wrong? You didn't scare the hell out of her, did you? This is where, well, mostly Asta says, no, I just thought you were singing. I mean, nothing. This is where, well, Asta says, singing? Motherfucker, I don't sing. And if I was going to sing, it would not be in front of you anytime soon. This is where, well, mostly Satoru scoffs and says, I, uh, I, I, mm, uh, this is where, well, mostly Junko's sister kind of looks like this. So, yeah, her name is AI, but yeah, just looks like this, but yeah. But not the point. They are basically uh, 11 years old, the same or same age with mostly Asta and, well, Satoru. Satoru is right now kind of looking away while AI is also looking away, but yeah. This is where well, both Junko and Asta looks confused because they know nothing about romance because they're only 11 year old kids. But this is where well, Asta then asks Junko if she wants to kind of come over towards the church and kind of just like eat something because, well, he really doesn't know if they have eating, it will eating anything. This is where well, mostly Junko say, nah, it'd be fun. This is where her stomach rumbles. This is where Asta just takes her hand and just says, let's go. I'll show you where exactly it's at. This is where, oh, she nods, and this is where, well, Satoru kind of just says, Okay, are we taking them? This is where Asa says, Just take the other girl by her hand. This is where, well, or her risk, whatever you think about it. This is where Satoru says, Uh, no thanks. This is where, well, Asa says, Just do it. God, you're annoying half the time, Satoru. Satoru says, Screw you, man. This is where, well, Satoru was kind of inching his hand towards AI until AI just grabs it and says, Let's just never talk about this again. This is where, well, mostly she smiles kind of cutely at Satoru. We made his heart a little bit beat and say, yeah, understand. This is where, well, we go into a time skip of, well, mostly them getting towards the church, but yeah. This is where, well, Sir and Lily thought they were basically both so cute looking and of course wanted them to actually stay. This is where, well, 
and they were kind of convinced to stay because they really have nowhere to go, and so why not? But we go into mostly a time skip of, well, from 11 years old to four years later. Now, during the fact it's time to get the grimoire. This is where, well, while mostly everyone is excited to get their grimoires, mostly Satoru is wondering if he's going to get some kind of powerful grimoire that basically defines everyone because he is that cocky. This is where, well, AI thinks that she's going to get like a very interesting grimoire that might be helping her in her career of singing. Which Satoru uh, kind of fully supports, but yeah. This is where, well, both Junko. Junko just thinks that she's going to get a grimoire that will help her out with her devil kind of abilities. But yeah, her demonic powers. This is where, well, mostly also has helped her with her demonic powers, but yeah. With his mostly own demonic powers that he has been using. This is where, well, mostly, uh, you know, thought that he's going to get like some kind of grimoire that he will become the... Well, he will become the Wizard King one day, but yeah, Asta, he doesn't really mind in becoming the Wizard King. If, uh, what's it called? If Yuno doesn't become the Wizard King, he's taking that Wizard King's position from, uh, Yuno. This is where Yuno says, you're not doing that. This is where Satoru just wants to become the strongest. And if the strongest means becoming the Wizard King, yeah. This is where, well, both, uh, Asta and even Satoru have different goals in mind. They really don't want even want to become the Wizard King. They're just going to try to make... You know, become the Wizard King. They're gaslighting him to actually become the Wizard King, but yeah. Or to just try really hard, but yeah. Well, they're not really gaslighting him. They just don't really care about be being the Wizard King, but yeah. That's where, well, they're all talking and yada yada, but yeah. But of course, we go into mostly a time skip from them kind of being in the, uh, what's it called, church to kind of going towards the, uh, well, tower. When they get there, this is where, well, mostly Asta is kind of just waiting for the damn grimoire to appear. This is where, well, mostly the uh, wizard dude kind of appears and says, Okay, you are all here because you're all 15 and to become wizards, well, to become magic knights. That's what all of you want to be, right? Well, it's time for the grimoire selection. This is where everyone's getting the grimoire. This is where, well, mostly Satoru is waiting for his grimoire and wondering, wondering when the hell is it going to appear. If it doesn't appear, then that means that he doesn't need a grimoire and he's just the strongest by the way. By just having no grimoire until a grimoire literally appears right in front of it out of thin air. This is where that grimoire has mostly three, well, not three, he has four leaf clovers on it. But it then also has in the middle of the four leaf clover the infinity symbol. He says, huh, that looks fucking dope. Now, the grimoire itself is kind of white, has kind of like these sparkles on there, like this bluish kind of like sparkles a little bit. It's kind of a dark blue with some kind of like turquoise blue, but not the point. This is where he says, this just looks interesting a lot. He opens the book and it does have a couple of spells. This is where he grins. This is where, well, next to him actually is AI's turn and AI actually gets her grimoire, which is actually also four leaf grimoire. And of course, instead of having, well, mostly nothing in the middle, in the middle is actually a star that appears. Her grimoire is kind of like this purplish pinkish color. And of course, it does kind of sparkle also, but mostly it has stars instead of kind of unlike what's it called Gojo's or mostly not Gojo's Satoru's grimoire, which is just kind of like somewhat has less like bluish kind of aura around it. But yeah, that's where, well, wavy kind of aura, but not the point. Yeah, so where, well, Satoru says, hey, look at that, AI, you got a star in the middle. Not gonna lie, you are a star a lot. This is where, well, AI blushes to say, shut up, Satoru, don't say stuff like that out loud. This is where, well, we'll see Satoru is just chuckling at mostly AI's cute reaction. But yeah, but this is where, well, we go into mostly the others. Yunos gets his four-leaf grimoire, which everyone was shocked to even see three people with four-leaf grimoires. This is where, well, Yunos' four-leaf grimoire is just the same in real canon. But this is where we go into Junko's. Junko's actually gets a five leaf grimoire and it does have mostly the symbol of like this kind of look of mostly. So it really doesn't have a symbol, but of course, this is where, well, the clovers itself are kind of a reddish color. And this is where, well, she says, interesting, look at that. This is where she shows towards mostly Asa and Asa says, that's cool. This is where his own grimoire actually appears right in front of him. His grimoire was actually kind of like mostly merging up with this darkness color. And this is where, well, it then appears right in front of him, which he grabs it. It's kind of a four leaf grimoire. Well, not really. Well, it is a five leaf grimoire that kind of has a symbol in the middle of mostly this kind of like 
mostly it looks kind of like a draconic head or something which you can't really tell but he really doesn't care this is where well he kind of just looks and kind of shows off to Junko and say look at this I also got a five leaf bar similar to uh, similar to the same like you this is where Junko kind of just smiles and says I guess we are the only ones with the five leaf overs this is where well also chuckles and says I guess so this is where well mostly we go into well both Satoru uh what's it called AI just talking but yeah this is where Yuno is just well he thought he was going to be the only special one, but no. His other somewhat brothers and sisters are kind of... Yeah. This is what, well... Mostly they are all kind of having their own grimoires, but yeah. This is very, you know, size. But this is where, well, another person got a grimoire, and it was a 40. This girl with kind of lightish blue hair, and of course she kind of has like these kind of like watery kind of blue eyes. This is where, well, she's kind of shocked and says, huh, I also got a four-leaf clover. This is where, well, her clo uh, four-leaf uh, clover grimoire kind of looks similar to Yuno's, but like a bluish color, but yeah. This is where Yuno is shocked, but yeah. This is where most of the nobles were angry that the peasant slash commoners are basically getting grimoires left and right, and showing off they're stronger than them. But yeah, this is where, well, mostly Yuno, Asta, uh, Junko, AI, and Satoru are kind of just walking off. This is where, well, mostly the bluish hair girl did want to go talk to mostly, well, you know, for the fact that mostly you know the other person that had a four leaf clover. And you know, knows this girl. Her name is Umi, and of course, they kind of been friends, but yeah. But of course, this is where, well, when they're walking away, this is where, well, Chain started trying to wrap around all kind of six of them. This is where, well, you know, right now uses his wind, like a wind barrier around him to protect Umi and him. This is where Satoru grabbed mostly AI and right now uses his limitless to actually block these chains from actually hitting them both or even trying to wrap around them. And this is where, right now, Asa just looks at the chains and they easily just be grabbing an instant by like these arms and an instant and freeze the chains entirely. Asa says, Junko, are you okay? This is where, well, Asa's holding on to Junko. Junko says, yeah, I'm fine. This is where, well, Mostly Satoru says, you okay, AI? Is this where AI says, yeah, stop putting me in your chest. It's embarrassing. AI, uh, this is where, well, mostly Satoru chuckles and says, it's not embarrassing. Uh, this is where, well, you know, says, you okay, Umi? Yeah, I'm fine. This is where the chain guy says, ugh, you guys are strong, but you won't be strong enough when I take your grimoires. This is where, well, he smiles at them. This is where, well, also says, this guy is deranged. And Satoru says, that is a fact. This is where, well, Yuno says, should we just defeat him at once? Agree, agree. <laughs> this is where, well, Mosi also right now summons out, well, Mosi, a draconic kind of being behind him. It looks like a demonic draconic being. This is where, well, it's right now roaring. This is where Satoru right now makes his own kind of ability, like of this bluish, like very powerful blue ball appears right in front of him. And this is where Yuno right now makes literally giant, like, wind spears around him. This is where, well, Mosi. Well, not wind spears. He made two giant bows that had literally wind arrows on them. Junko right now kind of uses her magic to actually kind of make what's it called this guy not being able to have any miracles and dodge anything. Basically, it's called tragedy. But yeah, it basically uh, allows him to be directly hit by all of these attacks while even dodging. But yeah, no matter what. This went well. Mostly, uh, well. Umi right now uses water kind of spears underneath what's it called or yeah water spirit manipulation to actually appear underneath the person and this where well water spirits were kind of rising up mostly well not around the person just mostly on the walls and this where well right now AI kind of gets angry and this is where she kind of summons out stars from the heavens this is where she says I'm going to kill you for doing that this is where well all of them looks like they're ready to just murder this guy, and this guy says, Hey, hey, we can talk about this, right? We we really can talk about this. I was not expecting that I was going to fight these kind of strong-ass kids. Hey, we can... This is where all of them shoots their attack, and this is where it literally blows this guy straight to fucking King Kingdom Kong, and it's gone. He's gone. He's literally fucking annihilated. This is where... Well, let's just say pathetic. This is where... Well, we'll see. He's just a pathetic monkey. This is where he has been saying kind of monkey for people who actually does piss him off. Junko says, I agree. Stupid monkey. Chain monkey weirdo. This is where, well, Mosi, you know, says annoying bastard. Umi says, agree. This is where, well, Sato says weakling. Or Mosi says, yo, my wall. And this is where, well, or yeah, he says weakling. This is where, well, AI says, I agree. This is where, well, mostly they all walk away, but yeah. This is where, well, the nobles that were there who were actually thinking of picking a fight with them just said, nope. 
They went away, walking away. They're like, yeah, we're not dying today. No. They are not considered to be commoners. They're just considered to be gods. But yeah. That's where, well, we go into mostly them kind of training for five months and actually going to go to the Magic Knight exam. Tra uh, well, mostly just a Magic Knight. This is where, well, mostly us to talk to Satoru and say, Satoru, what are you going to be? Well, what type of Magic Knight are you going to try to get in? That's where Satoru thinks and says, mm, the Black Wolves. This is where, well, Asta says, how the fuck do you know I was going to go in there? Wait, what do you mean you're going to go in there? You aren't going to any other? Nah, fuck that shit. All the other ones are basically made with nobles. And why would I want to be with a noble? Hell no. That's where, well, Junko and even uh, AI, they were thinking to also kind of go into the Black Bull. Because, well, they really do not like dealing with any of the others. That's where, well, you know it's actually going to try to go to the toppest tier. Even though he's ignoring basically both Satro and even Asta and their antics to go into the Black Bulls. But yeah. Well, Umi is actually thinking of going to the Blue Rose, but yeah. We're trying to get to the Blue Rose, because that's kind of a fair kind of stuff, but yeah. She's not going to get annoyed by any other guy. And she will be able to somewhat visit Yuno sometimes, if mostly the other upperclassmen are just so mean to her. But yeah, this work well, even though if, even though she has to do it in kind of secrecy or whatever. This work well, she really does not mind, but yeah. But we go into mostly a time skip of them kind of getting towards the Magic Knight exam. But for right now, I'll be ending it off here for this what if. Other than that, bye soon, yeah. So, peace. Alright, have a nice potato. Well, yeah. Potato day, potato night, potato say potato, potato, and good night. But yeah.